We now go up to South Holland and the Deepings. Sir John Hayes. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. In George Orwell's novel 1984, protagonist Symes explains the objective of Newspeak. Don't you see, he says, the whole aim of Newspeak is to narrow the range of thought. In the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible because there'll be no words in which to express it. So though there are those that don't understand or won't recognize this truth, language matters. It is through language that we understand, express, consider, challenge, think, and articulate. Through language, we breathe life into sentiment. And so we must ask ourselves a question. How do we get to the place where a government, a conservative government, mind you, brings a bill before us which seeks to abolish, in effect, two words used for centuries, two beautiful words, words which embody goodness and truth, mother and woman. For the legislation as drafted does just that. It rules those words out of law. Is it now considered embarrassing to be described as a woman, to admit to being a mother? Well, that seems to contradict the whole purpose of the bill. The bill, after all, is about recognizing the significance of motherhood and extending that recognition to those in the service of the crown. Are we uh, now acknowledging as a parliament that the concepts of motherhood and womanhood are so radical that they must be censored? Now, you know, uh, uh, as well as anyone, Madam Deputy Speaker, that when tabling amendments, one's often seeking to make small, sometimes complicated technical changes to legislation. Today, alongside my friend, the Honourable Member for Thurrock, my motivation is much more straightforward. To affirm the existence of, worth of, an eternal, an eternal value of womanhood and motherhood. And by the way, if the knees arose, I do the same for men and fatherhood, of course. By saying the words, by including the words in this bill, we will cement the virtues which the bill embodies in law. Now, as drafted, uh, the bill, in effect, extinguishes the de ordained particular characteristics of human types. I don't know whether that is as a result of artlessness or heartlessness, or whichever it anonymizes and dehumanizes as drafted now, which is why I've introduced the two amendments that stand in my name. Uh, and uh, I'm grateful for honorable friends across the house supporting those amendments. My, my short, uh, my speech is going to be uncharacteristically short, uh, but characteristically straightforward. Because fundamentally, Madam Deputy Speaker, this is a matter of common sense. The common sense uh, which prevails beyond this place and clearly beyond the wit or will of the people who drafted this legislation. Never underestimate the power of language. For there are those, those who are extreme and immoderate, who understand its power very well. And there are those, as the Honourable Member for Edinburgh Southwest said, who seek to obscure the biological differences, which are, frankly, the very reason that all of us are able to contribute to this debate, because we wouldn't be here without them. It's sad to see uh, the attempts that have been made to blur the picture, to muddy the waters, to cloak this matter in denial. Uh, it's sad to see the descriptions of drafting difficulties, legislative complications, Describe to me why one parliamentary lawyer, a distinguished one too, today, as entirely clueless and baseless. This is not a matter of drafting procedure. It is a matter of principle. Electors of all political persuasions and none across our kingdom, from Caithness to Caerphilly to Cornwall, from Antrim to Arundel, from Kent to Kendal, they expect us to do what they would anticipate is just that, common sense, to affirm womanhood and motherhood 
in this legislation, which is, after all, about maternity. Now, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, as all well understood, semantics matter, because through semantics, via meaning, we find truth. And in the pursuit of truth and in, the sol in solidarity with every woman and mother in South Holland and the Deepings and beyond, I am proud to move the amendments that stand in my name, and I shall be seeking to divide on them at the end of this committee session, with your indulgence, Madam Deputy Speaker.